What causes this? And this? And this? Of course, it's, it's free star damage. It's because they don't have the right airboid system. My name is Tyler Lay. I'm a concrete freak, and please subscribe to this channel if you have not. Let's buckle up and get ready to go. How do you stop this from happening in your concrete? Well, when you're making your concrete, you need to make sure you add a key ingredient. It is soap. It is air and training admixture. And what it does is it creates microscopic bubbles inside the concrete. Many, many variables impact the air content of your concrete, so it is very challenging to get this right. Some say the most challenging thing in concrete to get right is your air void system. But large bubbles, ladies and gentlemen, they're the problem. Ah, now, watch out for the large bubbles. What do you want in an air void spacing? Well, I'm showing two air void systems, one on the left, one on the right. Both of them have the same volume of air. If you're a concrete person though, you know, you would much, much rather have the one on the left. Yes, 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 that's the one you want. But, but why? Well, Number one, bubble spacing matters. See how on the left, the bubbles are closer together than the ones on the right? That is a big deal. Why? Because every single bubble protects a certain region around it. So the closer the bubbles equals more protection. If you don't understand what I'm saying, if I'm a water molecule and I freeze, there's only a certain distance that I can travel before I cause damage and we get a lot more protection out of the one on the left than the, we do out of the one on the right. But size matters when it comes to bubbles. It is a big deal. The larger bubbles are much more buoyant. That means they're much more likely to float out of the concrete. So actually you stabilize them, then you can lose them. But also these larger bubbles, no! They hurt your strength more than the smaller bubbles do. They, and so that's another reason why you want to watch out for them. But we in life want efficient things, and there's no different than that when it comes to concrete and air void systems. We want efficient air void systems. And the great secret to this is great bubble spacing with a low air volume. That's what it takes to get an efficient air void system. But how do you make that happen? Well, shouldn't we all try to make things more efficient? I think that answer is yes, and I'll be trying to answer that today and show you how to make that happen. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to use something called the Super Air Meter, or the SAM for short. This is what it looks like. You can find more information out at this website, superairmeter.com. And I've got a whole playlist of different videos about the Super Air Meter that you can check out. But seriously now, what's the Super Air Meter going to tell us? Well, it measures two things. It measures the volume of air in your concrete, and it also measures something called the SAM number. And that SAM number is going to tell you about the bubble spacing inside your fresh concrete. Pretty awesome, right? When you get this information when the concrete's still wet, so you can make changes, you can improve it, you can learn so much about your concrete by running this test. We're going to develop, take those two parameters and plot them on this chart on the x-axis. We have our air content down here. On the y-axis, we're going to have our SAM number, and when you combine them together, you get this something called the efficiency chart. Mwah! It is a powerful, powerful tool that I'm going to be showing you how it works today. Now, on the efficiency chart, there are three lines. Two of these curvy lines, the top one, air bubbles or air void systems will plot near it that are low efficiency. That means they're mainly made up of larger bubbles. And near the bottom line, the bottom swoopy line, there are mainly the high efficiency mixtures. That means mixtures that mainly have small bubbles. Now that dashed horizontal line, that will tell you what your critical bubble spacing is. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, is you've heard a term called the spacing factor. That's when the spacing factor is about 008.008 inches or 200 microns. This is the efficiency chart. And how it works is if I have a mixture that plots here, and then I have another mixture that plots here, we would say that mix number one is much more efficient than mix two. Why? Because it only took about 4% air to get to my critical bubble spacing out of mix one, but this one needs six and a half, maybe even higher than that, to get to the critical bubble spacing. Again, mix one, is more efficient than mix two. Anything that plots near the lower line is more efficient than th something that plots near the upper line. 
Now, I'm just showing you two air void systems here. This is where we've taken hardened concrete. We have polished it. We've colored it black. We put in white powder in the pores, and we can see the one on the left here. That's mix one, has mainly small voids. And look at mix two. Oh, big, big, nasty, scary, evil bubbles. Ah! But what in the world causes these large bubbles? Well, there's admixture interactions. That's when two admixtures don't play well together. There's when admixtures and cement don't play well together. There's different gradations of sand that can cause coarse air void systems. You can have inadequate mixing, as in they don't mix the concrete long enough. And you can have hot concrete. Yeah, when things get really, really hot, your air void system gets more coarse or larger by and large. So let's look at some data, right? I mean, this is cool and all, but let's see what happens in real life. Now, in these concrete mixtures, they are exactly the same in every way, but they use two different cements, okay? And we're gonna show you that those different cements cause different air void efficiencies. Here we go. Here is the air content down here. Here is the SAM number. And we've done this for multiple mixtures with different amounts or different dosages of air content in them. And you can see cement number one plots near the low efficiency line. That means it has mainly large bubbles. Cement number two plots near the high efficiency line. That means it's got mainly small bubbles. That's what you want. Yes, that's the one we are after, but you know, that's cool and all, but let's validate this with hardened concrete. So we're gonna take the exact same things, the exact same mixtures, but we're gonna cut them, we're gonna count the bubble spacing inside and plot them in the same way. So on the x-axis is still our air content, and on the y-axis is the spacing factor. This is really measured in the hardened concrete. This is a parameter that measures how close those air bubbles are to one another. And again, just like the last data set, look at C2. Look, 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 it's lower. That means you needed less air content to get this critical bubble spacing than C1. You needed more air content to get there. C2 is high efficiency. C1 is low efficiency. Let's look at another data set. These have the same cements, but they have different combinations of admixtures. One combination of admixtures, look at this, different air contents. We've used different air in, amounts of air in trainer. They plot near this low efficiency line. Different. This one, this combination of, air, of admixtures plus near the high efficiency line. And look again at the hardened data. It tells the exact same story. Here is the hardened number over here on the y-axis. We've got it down here. There is the very, very good air void system. That is the not so good air void system. Why is this cool? Well, you can find more information out on this website. I actually have papers that talk about this in more detail. I actually have a spreadsheet that you can use to put your own mixes in. If you have a super air meter to learn this information on your own to see if you have a high efficiency or low efficiency mixture. But what does all this mean? This means the efficiency chart is a powerful tool to help you troubleshoot and design concrete mixtures. This means you can do all this when the concrete is still wet. You can trade out different ingredients and figure out which ones and how they cause and impact your air void system. So you can get all of this information from the super air meter in approximately 10 minutes in fresh concrete. This is amazing way to really rapidly troubleshoot and help design your mixtures so you don't have these problems. So why in the world is this useful? Well, when you can make air efficient air void systems, you get better concrete, you get less problems, you are doing better for everyone. So I asked this question earlier, shouldn't we all try to be more efficient, especially when we're making the second most used commodity in the world, especially when we're making people's homes, their driveways, there's roads, there's bridges. I think we owe it to everyone to be a little bit more efficient in this stuff I showed you today is a way to make that happen. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, leave me a comment below, and don't forget to check me out on Instagram and Facebook at concrete.tyler. Take care, my concrete maniacs. Peace.